Ah, what a nice day it is. You know, lovely skies, nice trees. I have returned for your oh, wallet. Oh, for fuck yeah, bloody Richard. If you thought 20 quid on a bunch of clouds wasn't enough, ah, how about 15 quid on some enhanced leaves? Because we certainly asked for that crap, innit? An improvement, but come on, what a rip-off. Anyway, uh, <coughs> oh, Addy, our friends over at Armheggish Power Kill have blessed us with the way released of the Class 3 on 7 pack volume 3, Squatland Edition. Oh, I tell ya, only proud Squatsman would be excited about this. <laughs> Let's see if this pack is either beyond expectations, or so diabolical I want to spend an entire day in hole. I mean, it's already going to be the latter, isn't it? In fact, why am I even reviewing this pack in the first place? Also, I rebranded. How does it look? It probably looks like an eyesore to you like the moment, but I'm sure with some time, you'll get used to it. Anyway, without further ado, roll the intro, Gary! Time for a bit of history. Good job, Gary. The Class C18 is a Class C17, but Scottish. They were constructed between 1985 and 1986, entering service in September 1986 on the, at the time, newly electrified Ayrshire coastline. Each train is three cars long, with a top speed of 90 miles per hour, plus, like its sister the 317, only operates via AC overhead wires. The only other difference between the two trains electrically is that rather than using general electric traction, the 318s are equipped with brush traction motors, the same as used on the Class 320s and 321s. And as well as that, it isn't uncommon to see 318s and 320s working multiple of each other too. It was also between 2005 and 2007 when the Class 218s underwent a refurbishment that really made them look different to the 317 appearance-wise, with the removal of their front gangway connector as well as modernising other bits for more pleasurable passenger experience. The trains are still in service today, and courtesy of Sir Guter Barnhoff the first, the entire history of the units has been brought into Train Simulator. Although not quite as originally intended because... MONEY! 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 Ah! On the other hand, some of the new modelling looks quite nice. I like all the additions they've made to the cab, and the inclusion of the new style front is not bad, but it still doesn't excuse how garbage the rest of it looks. I mean, just look at it. I won't go into too much detail again, but... Uh, I'm really not keen on that base model even if it does look close enough. There are just too many bloody flaws. How could they desecrate such an iconic train design like that? Come on! Even the interior still looks crap. And those seats... Now that's not quite right now, is it? Seats are the incorrect shape, therefore wrong. <coughs> also, as you pass through a tunnel, what the hell is this? Right, let's move on before I puke in my mouth again. Now, the liveries. Representing Scotland's bravery and glory. Strathclyde Transports, SBT Rail, and ScotRail Soul Tire. Showcasing the gorgeous Scottish flag. That is all. Not much else to say here. Liveries are fine. Although for the ScotRail livery, it's missing a few modern day decals. No fairness. So it's a 320, but that pack is even older than my granddad. Looking at the other features, they're all about the same. You still get Juarverni and God operation, more slip crap, neutral section stuff, isolation switch rubbish, the Pantograph electrocuting itself, verbal power and volume crap, crash mode, no wrong train Gary, customizable destinations, cold start mode, and finally a GSMR, CSR, but with some Scottish twist, and then RN, which I guess is half new. Also, if you thought you could drive the train with a 320 cobble to the rear, <laughs> think again. However, still no random door operation. I mean, I know that will never happen, but imagine how cool that would be to see. Actually, no, what am I on about? This is too much for Richard. Now, my friends, as most audio in this pack is shared with the previous Class U and 7 release, we're mainly going to be focusing on the new traction motor sounds in this review. Although other than that, 
The new door alarms sound nice. As discussed earlier, Vero Nates are equipped with brush type TM21 41 motors, which have been accurately recreated into Train Simulator. Although, how accurately? We're about to find out. It's not the worst motors I've heard, but unfortunately it still sounds quite off. Don't get me wrong, it definitely has that feel of a 308, 320 and 3 to 1 traction motor, though as I've explained before, it does sound very low quality as well as maybe a tad too quiet in my opinion. Plus another thing that bugs me is the lack of gearbox noise. Now, the gearbox is the sound of the traction motor sort of subtly idling after power is cut, something quite familiar with most BR Mark III derived rolling stock. It sounds something like this. I was going to bring this point up in my last review, although at the time I didn't know those sounds came from the gearbox. The thing is, AP do simulate this audio quite well at high speeds, though at low speeds, it's barely audible. I know this isn't something that's going to bug everyone, but for me, well, you know what I'm like, sadly. And another nitpick, the external transformer isn't loud enough. Compared to this. However, luckily the aforementioned was indeed simulated nicely in a sound patch for this train, which also includes higher quality motor sounds. A link in the description to this will be provided to those that may wish to enhance their 318 experience. Now the next thing AP needs to do is patch those new motor sounds onto and upgrade the dusty pin pack. But, as I figured, they can't be bothered yet. Lol. Overall though, eh, the sounds are close enough. Gary, we're going to hole. So then, do I think this multiple unit pack has earned its place as a valid separate purchase from the other Class 2 and 7 volumes? And is worth the $19.99 or $24.99 you have to somehow shell out? <laughs> you must be on some hard crack if you thought I was going to say yes. These packs are a ripoff, made more obvious by the fact again you have to pay for these trains individually, meaning in total, as predicted, you'd be paying nearly 65 doubloons. They had no reason to make these three separate purchases, especially when you remember that this pack was originally meant to be part of the 3 and 7 pack volume 2. Sure, it may have been an overload of features and stuff, but at least you would have probably got better value for money. However, it's not the value for money Richard cares about these days. It is just money. Bastard. Would I recommend this pack though? Well, if you love your trains, or you're just Scottish, then sure. But for me, it's just there to be very honest. Nice having game, but my god I still hate that model. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Hope you enjoyed this review despite how out of the blue and late it is. But as always, thank you all very much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.